Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to JS Simplified. My name is Tyler and I'm gonna simplify lazy loading and help you get some better performance out of your Electron applications. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna cover is what is lazy loading? And a good example of lazy loading is YouTube in the video you're watching right now. So typically when you click on YouTube and you refresh the page or go to a new video, it's gonna start by loading in the video contents, then the content like the title, the like, or well, the lack of dislike count. It's gonna load in the subscriber count, which you should subscribe by the way, if you like this type of content. And then it's gonna start loading in the thumbnails for other videos and the description in the comments, which are just out of your eyesight right now. So the way lazy loading works here is it allows YouTube to load the video before everything else, because that's the most important thing, is the video. Lazy loading works the same way with code. What you can do is load an asset, a video, an image, a JavaScript file, for example, only when you need it. So let's actually dive into some code and see how this really works. So currently I am in my text editor and I have a timer set for starting the application and I end that timer right when we show the window. So what this is going to do, right, is when I call npm run dev, right when the application starts. So right now, it's going to start the timer, and right when I can see the window and the user can start using it, it's going to end the timer. And what you'll see is it took 1.10 milliseconds, which is really as quick as you're going to get with an Electron application. Furthermore, I also created a run function timer. So when I click this run function, it's gonna time how long it took to execute this function. Currently, it is very, very quick because it is a blank function. There is nothing in here but this timer. So let's start adding some code and see how that affects our Electron performance. So I'm going to quickly copy and paste a few imports that are pretty common in some Electron applications. You may have some of these imports in your own apps, but you also might have other imports that are bigger or more slow to load in. And what you'll see is just by increasing the import count from two to six, we have now increased our startup time by 20%. So just by increasing this, the count of the imports by a few percent, right? We've now increased it by 23% our loading time. And the reason that is, is because requiring a file can take some time, right? We've all seen the memes of node module folders that are bigger than the actual project structure itself. And that's totally true. A node module folder contains node modules and those modules themselves require other modules. So what JavaScript has to do is it has to go one by one to each require top to bottom and kind of recursively go down that tree of module requirements and that can take a while for some stuff. But let's say we actually need all four of these imports. What, what are we gonna do to actually speed up our application? Like 1.2 seconds, it can't get any faster, right? We need these imports. And that's where you need to ask yourself, do I need these imports at the start of the application? As in, do I need these imports before I show the window? Or could I maybe move the imports somewhere else? And that, is an app, uh, and that is a question that is very good to ask yourself because if you simply said yes to the latter, that you don't need the imports right away, you could just delete these imports and bring them to where you need them. And let's say for this application, I need all of the imports in this file right here, right? For this application, just by moving all of this over here, what's now happening is I'm starting from top to bottom. I'm importing two of my requires, right? So I'm doing two require checks. I can't really avoid these. And then I show the window and now the user is using the application. But only when we click that button is it actually requiring these files. And this is a good thing because it means that now we've lazy loaded our code. And what that means is, is by starting up the application, it now takes one second to load the application window which means the user is now happy. They don't see, they're not waiting for the application to start up. And it means I can click this button and you see there's a delay the first time I click it. It took 200 milliseconds to load the modules inside this function. However, every time after that, it takes basically nothing because the way requires work inside of JavaScript 
is when you require something for the first time, it'll check to see if it's already cached. If it is, it'll just pull that cached version. But the first time you're requiring it, it has to require it, and then it caches it. So the first time you're gonna incur a penalty. And the question is, do you want the penalty to be in this function or at the very top of your application? And that's something I can't answer. That's something no one can really answer. It all depends on how your application works. You may need the SI module right at startup, right? Like you may genuinely need this module right here. Like maybe you need it, right? You can do const data is equal to awaits SI dot like get, get all data or something. Like what if you genuinely need this data? Well then yeah, you kind of need this module to be required right here. But if you need, you know, these three in different areas, like let's say you need um, those two there and then the other one over here, you can do that and it doesn't affect your application. For example, I can now do like, you know, console.log electron store dot, you know, like anything really. Like I can use these modules only when I need them. And the beauty of this is, is now I can, I can determine where I want to load code and how I want the application to run even more than before. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, this is something that's really useful with Electron applications because it's a very prevalent thing. For example, let's say I genuinely needed this await get all data. You can see that this took a long time to call that function, right? It took 12 seconds to get all of the data that this method does. But let's say like, you know, let's say I didn't need this function or let's say based on windows, I needed this function, right? I could do something like this. If process dot platform is equal to like windows, I then call the function and bring it in. But other than that, right, I don't need it. So what will happen is if I rerun this, I'm expecting it to take a while. And yeah, it's, it, it's taken a good bit of time. You can see it took 12 seconds last time. I'm not going to wait the full 12 seconds, but it does take a while. But let's say I say, okay, what if it only needs this on, say, Linux, right? Only Linux users need to load this function. Well, then I can do the same thing, and I'm dynamically calling this function. And you can see it already has finished loading it, and the, the startup time is just so much quicker. So... If you found this video useful, you know what to do. Please like, comment, subscribe, comment with any feedback you have or any questions you may have, and please consider maybe joining the Discord server if you want to interact with the community on a more personal level. If you found this video useful, anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.